Greetings everybody and welcome to a 7 days to die modding tutorial. So guys, this tutorial series is going to be for anyone who's looking to get into modding 7 days to die, adding cool stuff with XML. Um, this series is pretty much going to assume you know nothing about how to mod 7 days to die, you've never seen an XML file in your life and you need to go ahead and uh, learn all these cool things to make the changes you want to have in your game. Um, hopefully by the end of the series you guys will be able to make your own modlets with some cool new features and maybe even publish them for other people to download as well. Now, um, there's a few things we're going to need to do before we get started, but before we go ahead and do that, I just want to say if anyone's looking for, um, you know, Unity asset things uh, or to do with like creating your own entities, rigging, animation, all that kind of stuff, this tutorial series will not cover those things. This is going to be a bare bones XML only modding series uh, with a little bit of art using paint on it as well. So that you guys can create your own uh, item icons and other things like that. So without any further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is before we even start with uh, actually getting all the stuff we need. So there's something we actually need to do first. We're going to go ahead and open Steam. And then if we go to library, we should find our seven days to die game right here. Now, if you right click on this and go to properties, the first thing we want to do is make sure our game files and working copy is a clean install. So the first thing we do is go to local files. And then if you go ahead and click verify integrity of game files, if there are any files that have been altered before or are there are any random changes to files that shouldn't be there, this will go ahead and clear away all those changes for you so that you're working from a clean copy of 7 Days to Die. So hopefully, if you go ahead and press this, everything should be cleaned up for you and we should all be in, uh, in the same copy. Alpha 18.4 is the current version and I think these tutorials will probably work for future alphas as well. Of course, if they don't, I will uh, I will post their thing in the comments saying, hey, yeah, this, this series doesn't work anymore. But hopefully that's going to work for the, for the uh, future versions of 7 Days as well. Now, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and go browse local files. Now, when we click this button, this is going to open up a new folder window right here, and it's going to take us directly into the 7 Days to Die folder, which is awesome. Now, what we're going to do is we need to do two things. The first thing is to create a desktop shortcut, because this is going to make it a lot easier for you to uh, get back to this file a little bit later on when you need to. So the first thing we're going to do is if we go up one, uh, up one level here, we're going to click on Common. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click on 7 days to die. And if you scroll down, there should be a button called Create Shortcut. We're going to go ahead and press this guy. If we close down Steam now, we should see a shortcut has appeared. If we close down Steam, if you drag the shortcut into an area where you can access it easily, like your desktop, um, you can go ahead and drag it into here. Um, I've already got a shortcut, so I'm just going to say, yeah, you know, replace the file in the destination. Why not? It's just a shortcut. And then this will then be on your desktop. And whenever you go and want to navigate to this folder, say if we close it down for any reason, just double click it and it will take you right back to this location. So that is awesome. So now we have a shortcut that will take us to the folder without us having to navigate through everything, which is, uh, yeah, something, something pretty cool. So the next thing we want to do is we need to create a mods folder inside our 7 days to die directory. So if we go and find a blank space in here and just right click, you should get a new option. If you click that then go folder and then this folder needs to be called MODS, so M-O-D-S with a capital M. Now, if this is called anything different, this will not work. It has to be called MODS, and right now, we're just going to leave it completely empty. We're ready to go ahead now and download all the stuff we are going to need to get started with 7 Days. There are three things in particular that we're going to need to do. The first one is we're going to need a text editor. You can use Notepad or text edit if you're on a Mac if you want to. However, there is a much better option available for you, which is out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this site, notepad-plus-plus.org forward slash downloads. The link is in the description for you guys if you need to go ahead and uh, quickly click that. Now this will take you to the Notepad++ download in the installer page. All you want to do is pretty much go ahead and uh, grab this guy and download it. Now Notepad++ is pretty much like your basic version of Notepad, but instead of it all being in one color, it will color code everything for you and make it a lot easier to read. So trust me, you definitely want to use this um, over a Notepad or basic text editor program because it really, really helps you in the long run. Second of all, 
we want to go to this guy here. This is getpaint.net. Now, paint.net is what I use for all of my art assets, um, all of my uh, all of my uh, custom icons, item icons, uh, th even thumbnails for videos as well on YouTube. I use paint.net for like everything. You can pretty much think of it as a better version of Microsoft Paint with many, many, many more features, which we'll be finding very, very useful as we go along. So the best thing you can do is go ahead and download this guy as well. So just go ahead and download and install this guy. So you're going to download it, and then you're going to install it like you would any other program. You should just be able to launch the installer, and it will do everything for you. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to my GitHub. You know why? Because I've done a lot of work for you guys and set up a modlet template so that we don't have to worry about explaining the entire folder structure and everything like that. We will get on to explaining it, but this will make sure that you guys are working from the same copy as I am, and then there are no errors uh, in folder structures or anything like that, hopefully. So let's go ahead and look at this. So if you go into my GitHub, so it's github.com slash mdf25. Again, link is in the description. We're going to go to this guy here, repositories. You should see 10 repositories right here. And we're going to go and scroll down and and there should be one if uh, we go down to the second one it should be modlet template a18 you click on this guy what you want to do is go to here and click clone or download once you click on this guy you're going to say there's an opening desktop so if you happen to have a github desktop you can use that but most of you guys are going to have a uh, are not going to have this and you just want to download a zip folder so if you go ahead and download this guy it's going to go ahead and copy this guy and download it to your downloads folder it's a really quick download as well it's already done for me so we're going to go ahead and click it now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open this up and inside here you can see we have a folder called modlet template we're going to go ahead and copy this guy so right click and copy or if you're a bit more savvy you can press ctrl c and then in the seven days to die directory which i currently have open but if i didn't i could use my nifty little desktop shortcut we're going to go into the mods folder and we're going to paste it directly into the mods folder so i'm just going to go ahead and plop it right there See, easy as that. Now this is one modlet. Now you can have as many of these modlets as you like. You can have one, you can have 10, you can have 100 if you want that many modlets installed. Um, but this is where all your modlets are going to go, um, which are then going to get read by seven days when you start a world and apply all the changes. Now, there's a couple of things we need to change in here. The first thing is we should probably change the name of the folder. So currently the folder is called modlet template. Um, so let's go ahead and click on this. I'm going to change it to, I don't know, uh, let's call it uh, my first. Yeah, let's call it my first modlet. Right, let's go and do that. So my first modlet is the name of this modlet. Double click on the file here, and you'll see that there's a couple of other folders and files here that you want to open. Now, the first thing you want to do is install Notepad++. Once you've got that, you should be able to right click on this, and then it should have an option to say open with Notepad++ if you don't have that already. So if, it, if you have installed Notepad, you should get an edit with Notepad++ option right here. Um, so it doesn't open in Notepad, and you can set this to open it in default with Notepad as well, if you want to. So instead of uh, opening in your default text editor, you can set it to open in Notepad++. So when I double click on this, we're gonna go ahead and open mod.xml. Now, this might be a little bit confusing at first, but don't worry, I will be explaining XML from the ground up as we go along. Don't be, uh, don't be too bothered by all these uh, orange and white bits. It's gonna become a little bit clearer as we go. Now, the first thing I wanna do is go to plugins because we want to install uh, this guy xml tools i currently have it installed but what xml tools does is if you do have any wrong formatting in your xml it will actually tell you about it when you go to save the document so you know where to go and have a look for errors now we're going to go to plugin manager and this is how you install it you go plugin manager show plugin manager and then when you're in plugin manager if you go to the available tab which i'm already in and you scroll down to near the bottom so we're going to go, which I actually nearly am as well. Scroll down to near the bottom and you should find, uh, I won't find it because I've already installed it, but around this area um, should be the XML Tools plugin. So it will come up under XML Tools. You click on it and then there should be an Install button, which is pretty much in the same place here. So you click on it, then there should be an Install button. Click on that and install it and that will give you the XML Helper plugin. So anytime you make errors in your XML, for example, it will go ahead and notify you so you don't have to worry about um, having inconsistent XML and the game complaining at you, which is really, really handy. All right, so now with that in mind, let's go ahead and edit our first XML file. This is the mod.xml file. Now, the reason we have this is it tells um, it's for people who use the DMT mod launcher. This will allow your modlet to show up in the DMT launcher. Otherwise, it just won't show up even though you've done everything else correctly. The first thing is the author. So this is pretty much your name. So I'm Maxbox Gaming, so that's going to be my author name. Now, 
currently the name of the mod is mod template, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So if you double click and drag, you can highlight whole words, which is really, really handy. And we're going to call this my first modlet. So let's go and do that. Okay, so then for the description, we can just go ahead and double click and drag to get everything here. And then we can just say a cool modlet adding lots of nice things. Okay, and then I need to close that description tag again because um, I accidentally deleted the angled bracket and the forward slash. Next thing we're going to do is the mod version. 1.0 is fine, and the game version, currently we're on 18.4. If you're on a different version, then go ahead and just update that for a different version. The launch version, just leave as 0.7.3. Um, I believe the I believe the DMT version now is like 1.5.2 or something like that, but I, I haven't had any problems just leaving this with 0.7.3. Now, if there is an error in your XML, so for example, say if I um, didn't correct my little error here, uh, and just left this off. If I went to go ahead and save this now, so if I went Control S to save it, it would say XML passing error at line 10, premature end of data in tag mod line 1. Now, this essentially is telling me that I have not got a properly closed tag. The message is a little bit cryptic, but what you want to do is you want to go down your XML and check if each of these tags are opened and closed properly. An opening tag starts with an angled bracket, then a word, and then it ends with an angled bracket. A closing tag is the same as an opening tag, but instead of starting with just an angle bracket, it starts with an angle bracket and a forward slash. So you have to make sure that in XML, if you open a tag like this opening mod tag, you have to close it like here this with a closing mod tag. And tags have to be opened and closed in order as well. So inside the mod tag, I've got an opening info tag and then a closing info tag. But notice how because I open the info tag after the mod tag, I close the info tag before I close the mod tag. So essentially you have to close them in the opposite order. Now inside here we've got opening and closing author tags, opening and closing name tag, an opening description tag, but oh look at this, it's just got description and then I've not got my proper tag. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and go forward slash description like this. Now the cool thing is if you add a new tag, so if I just went and added a new tag here, and then closed it, if you've got XML helper installed um, or the XML tools, it will actually close the thing for you, which is really, really good. So that's something uh, that's really, really useful to bear in mind. Um, it will close the tags for you automatically, so you shouldn't run into these issues. But once I go ahead and fix those issues and save it, we should be good. So that is the first XML file we've gone ahead and adjusted. Now the second one, is this guy modinfo.xml and this is the one that seven days to die the actual game reads so what we're going to do is we're going to go into here and again we're going to go ahead and change the properties so the name of course was my first modlet and then description we can go ahead and copy from this guy so a cool model adding lots of nice things so let's go ahead and copy this guy and put you in here And then, of course, the author and the version name are not going to change because, you know, I'm still Maxbox Gaming and it's still version 1. And once you've done that, it should be good to go. And then we can go and save it. There are no errors. And now we're ready to go ahead and see if our modlet works in game. To do this, all we're going to do is we're going to come out of our, we're going to come out of our files here and go to Steam again. Go to 7 Days to Die and just click Play. And then if you go ahead and show, you don't have to show the game launcher, just play it. Uh, don't be a noob like me and show the game launcher. So you go and play this thing. And let this, thing, uh, let this thing load up. And then once you've loaded it, if you press F1, we should go ahead and see that by scrolling all the way up, it says it started to loading mods, and it says it's trying to load from folder My First Modlet. So there's the name of our folder, and then it loaded the mod My First Modlet, which is what we put in mod.xml. And as you can see, loading is done. Everything was successful, and that means that it worked just fine. So now we've gone ahead and loaded our modlet, and that means that the game now recognizes that we have a modlet installed, and it will go ahead and do any changes that we apply to it. So I think, guys, at this point, we're at a good point to end off this very first introductory episode to modding. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and look at how to add our very first recipe into the game and get into a little bit of XML and XPath. Um, now, if you haven't heard of XPath before, don't worry, it's actually a very, very easy thing to get once you've got a few basic things under your belt. So we're going to go ahead through it step by step in the next episode, and we're going to add our very first recipe into the game. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, bye!